Knitter here, and today I'm going to show you how to make a faux fur pom pom, which can be used to place at the top of the hat. It can be used for anything, but I like to use them uh, for hats. The reason I like using uh, these rather than traditional pom poms uh, made out of yarn is traditional pom poms are fairly heavy, especially if you want a big one. This pom pom I'm about to show you how to make is very, very lightweight, so it sits on top of the hat and it, it keeps the hat up versus sagging to one side or the other or backwards or forwards. So this right here is the faux fur that I'm gonna use. This is actually faux chinchilla fur and I found it at uh, Joanne's Fabrics. Uh, it's fairly, um, in a, I mean, it's, I, I buy it by the half yard and it's a huge, huge piece. So it, it's gonna make several, uh, several pom poms. But it's relatively inexpensive. You can also uh, use a coupon. They have coupons for uh, Joann's fabric that you can use. That'll also um, reduce the cost of this. But this is on the bolt. Uh, it is in the fleece section of the store. So I'm gonna be using this. Uh, the other uh, material that you'll need is some uh, cotton string. Uh, this is actually Aunt Lydia's uh, crochet thread. Um, it's fairly thick, um, and I'm, uh, when I use this, I'm actually going to double up on it. And the reason for that is if you only use a single uh, piece like this, uh, it will actually break when you draw the pom-pom closed. I, I found that out the very first time I made one of these. But I've made several since, and what I've done is just doubled up on the thread like this. Uh, you'll also need some polyester fill, uh, about a bag fairly big size bag and I just usually grab a tuft about this size uh, off of it and this will go in inside of the pom pom to make it stay open. Now uh, the only other things that you'll need are uh, some scissors. I recommend a, a good pair of scissors. Uh, some uh, scissors that are fairly sharp. You'll need a sewing needle and this is one that has a very sharp uh, point to it. And then in addition um, I also use a, um, a tapestry needle, which has a soft point on it or a rounded point, and I'll use this to actually attach the pom-pom to my hat once I've finished the pom-pom. Okay, so the pom-pom that I'm going to be making, I'm going to be making it out of a uh, six-inch circle. Um, and I, I like to be pretty precise when I cut the circle so that the pom-pom is fairly even. So I am going to be using the tin or the lid from my tin sugar uh, can. And this is actually six inches in uh, diameter exactly. Now, when it comes to the chinchilla hair, if you notice, um, it's kind of an ombre effect as you go across and you, it goes from very light to very, very dark and then back to light again. So you can actually uh, change how uh, your pom-pom appears with regard to the ombre effect based on where you actually place the circle. So for example, if I wanted a pom-pom that went from the base to the top from light to the darker color respectively, then I would place my circle this way because then this dark part that you see here would end up being at the top or towards the top of your pom-pom. On the other hand, if you wanted the pom-pom to be lighter at the top, then you could put your circle here, for example, because then this right here would be the top of the pom-pom, so it would kind of go from dark to light. So keep that in mind when using any type of ombre uh, faux fur. And by the way, they do have other kinds of faux fur in that section. They've got white, they've got black, uh, they even have what, what to me looks like polar bear. I actually haven't picked up the bolt to see exactly what it is, but it's 
it's basically like a cream color that's very, very long. It has like a long hair to it. So this uh, is kind of a, sh uh, a medium, I would say medium hair. Um, and it, it lays, as you, as you can see, it lays down this, and this way, you know, towards the top. And if you go like this, you can see uh, how, it's, how it actually lays, or it's, it's wanting to lay flat like this. And so what I'm going to do is, and you can see I've already made a few, a uh, couple of pom-poms uh, from this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first cut out a square that's just a little bit bigger than my circle. So you can kind of go like this, and then you can kind of mark it this way, and then I'll mark it this way, and then I will cut out my um, square. Okay, so I'm back and I've cut out my square. And then what I've done is using the uh, tin uh, top, as I had explained earlier, used it and with a Sharpie just traced a circle around it. And that's so I, I do want to kind of keep uh, it pretty precise because then your pom-pom will be pretty precise. Um, you can make this smaller or larger. Um, if you want a smaller pom-pom, obviously make these, uh, the diameter of the circle smaller. If you want one that's slightly larger, you can you know, maybe go out to eight inches or something like that. But this is a six inch that I'm, I'm actually making. Now, I didn't mention this at the beginning of the video, but um, this is kind of messy um, in the beginning because while you're doing all of this cutting, you've got all this loose hair uh, right here. So I usually like to do it on um, a light surface so I can see all of it and, get, and gather most of it up and just kind of put it away. Um, I usually use a piece of uh, masking tape or duct tape and I lay it out on the side and then as I gather it up I just stick it on there and that way it won't go anywhere between here and the trash can but uh, just keep that in mind that this is a little messy at first all right so when I turn this over gather all this see and if you notice the hair is lying this way so it's, it's going straight down and the reason why I want to know that is because when I go to cut, when I'm cutting on this side, it's, it's okay. But when I'm cutting down here in this region, as I'm cutting, I want to get my fingertips close to the perimeter of the circle. And then I want to start pulling the hair back like this. It's just on this section. And the reason for that is if you don't, this hair that's laying down this way, when you go to cut, you're going to have pieces of hair that look like they've been chopped um, and they're, they're very, they have an abrupt line across them. And I don't like that. I, I like for most of my hair to look um, all the way to the very tip. So when you do this, as you cut, you're, you're pulling those stragglers out of the way of your scissors. So like, as you can imagine cutting right here, you're not going to cut any of the tips off. So that's what I like to do. And I recommend doing when you, when you actually cut. Of course, when cutting uh, this way, because the hairs are running this way, it's not really an issue until you start to get it into this bottom curve. It's not an issue at all at the top. And that's because all the hair uh, from the edge and down, it's laying in the right way anyway. So you won't lose any hair that way. So I'm just going to begin with my scissors and just cutting the circle and then clearing the fur, as much fur as I can out of the way of those blades as I mentioned. And so I'm going to keep continue or continue to cut all the way around this circle and then I will join you back and show you what to do next. Okay, so I finished cutting out my circle and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go along the edge and pull out any loose fur that's right on that edge because there will be some but once you get into um, the actual circle away from the edge the fur the faux fur that's in the actual fabric that's not going anywhere but it's just that which is on the very very edge that you want to go ahead and remove and that way you won't have to deal with it 
once it's a pom-pom and attached to whatever you're going to attach it to. This will keep it from continuing to shed on your hat or whatever it is that you're at, you're putting this onto. I've seen um, these as uh, cat toys. And so I actually made one for my daughter's cat. And it's just a ball. <laughs> it's just the pom-pom by itself. And it's, uh, I left the strings on it so you can kind of sling it around, you know, on the floor, down the hall, and they'll go after it because they think it's a little furry animal. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of clean and clear my workspace and get rid of all of this excess. Okay, so I've got my workspace cleaned up. And now I'm ready to begin making the pom-pom. Now, what I've done is I've gotten some of this, uh, this cotton uh, thread that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. And I've cut, it was originally about probably, I would say, four feet. And then when it's looped together or doubled, it's about maybe two and a half. It's probably like five feet initially and then two and a half feet of uh, string what you have here. Now, the other thing that I did was about, oh, maybe 10 inches in, I tied a double knot. This will serve as the anchor for the pom-pom. Uh, and this is the, this is the knot uh, to which all of this fabric will gather against uh, when I make the pom-pom. And the reason why I made a long tail is because this is one of the four tails that I will use to thread through the top portion of my hat to attach it to the hat. I always use four rather than two. All right, so what you're gonna do is pick up your uh, piece of faux fur and you're gonna come about, I would say a quarter of an inch away from or in from the edge. And you're just doing a, um, a gathering stitch. I don't know if there's another stitch for this, um, but I, I refer to it as a gathering stitch because when you pull the string, whatever it's in, uh, gathers or bunches together. So I usually do a few at a time and then I pull this through. And this is a sharp needle, so do be careful. Now, as I'm pulling it, what I'm doing is I'm holding my two fingers down because I want it to draw clean. The very last thing that you want happening is as you're pulling this through, it begins to twist and knot together because if you have a knot anywhere else but here, this will not work as a gathering stitch. So you wanna be mindful of that. And then the other thing that you wanna be mindful of is as you're going in, uh, go in at a, sh at a sharp angle. Uh, you don't want to end up gathering a bunch of fur. So I usually wanna go down into the fabric and just, just above where the fur starts to come out of it. And that way I'm not um, gathering up large tufts of hair, which could then prevent you from um, cinching this really tightly. Okay, so I'm about halfway finished, or halfway around. Now, what I wanna do is, at this point, I wanna to start to 
gather the first half of what I've done. And the reason why you want to do it now is because if this is all the way around, um, it's hard to gather the entire circumference at once. So I usually like to get to gather some of it about halfway through. And then I will, and plus that also gives me more uh, thread to work with. And then I'll just continue working the other half. So I'm going to continue working the other half and then I will come back and meet you once I'm back at the beginning again. Okay, so I'm back and the very last uh, stitch that I come out of my material with, uh, the needle is coming out right before the knot. So you want to make sure it's before the knot. Uh, you want to make sure it's, it's close to the knot. And that way you can gather as much of this, of this circumference as you can. <laughs> okay, so that's the final stitch. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my my fill, and you don't need a lot. Um, I mean, obviously you can use more if you want the pom pom to be firmer, but you really don't have to use a lot to keep the pom pom open. So you want to make sure it's in there, and then you want to draw it all the way closed. And then what I do is I tie a knot at the point or the cinch the cinch point or the point where it's drawn closed and then I try I tie a second knot. Okay. And then what I do is, so here's one tail, and I want the other tail to be directly across. Pull this out here. And so what I do is I come over and I find the edge, and then I go into that edge, the edge that's directly across from uh, where the knot is. So you can kind of see in there where it's going through. <clears throat> so then at this point I am done with this. And so I'll cut the tail. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert uh, two more threads um, because I want to make sure that the pom-pom is completely flush or the bottom of the pom-pom is completely flush with the very top of the hat and I don't want it to kind of tip up or tip back or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is cut a second thread and let's see what I'm doing. There it is. I have to get one of those um, needle threaders the next time I'm at Michael's, but in the time being this works. Okay, and again, you want this to be double thickness for the thread. And then again, you can tie a knot, or a double knot, I should say, at one end, but leave tail like the other, like you did at the other one. Now with this, what you're going to do is you're going to turn your pom-pom a quarter of a turn, and then you're going to go into 
this edge over here and then just keep pulling this until it reaches the knot. Ouch. And then you're going to go directly across like this to the other side. just to the edge. There we go. And then I'll cut that in. I'm done using that needle. All right, so now here's your finished pom-pom. And you've got your four uh, anchor strings or anchor attachable strings and now I'll show you how to attach it to your pump or your hat so I'm going to attach these two first so I'm going to take my hat and kind of line it up with how I want to go and then I'm going to take this first one and I'm going to go in right here and pull it through and then I'm going to take the second set directly across from it and lining it up with here I'm going to go directly across from that one and then just pull it through okay, so we've got it like that and then I'm going to take this one here and then I'm going to line this one up right here um, right there And then we have one more. So gently I turn this over because you don't want to pull out what you've already ins inserted into the top of your hat. And then I'll insert this one right there. And then just pull that through. And then what you do is carefully again, you open up the ends to the inside of the hat and you can see where all of your strings are so you've got one at 12 o'clock three o'clock six o'clock and nine o'clock and so then I'm going to take these two that are directly across from each other tie it pretty tight because that will bring the pom-pom, the base of the pom-pom uh, flush to the top of the hat and it will keep it there. Because you don't want a dangly pom-pom. Uh, you want one that sits. And I'll just, I knotted that a few, uh, about four times. And then I'll grab these last two that are across from one another. That and again make that pretty tight. And then a few knots to secure it. And there is your finished 
pom-pom for your hat. So uh, again, you can use this method for any type of fur, uh, any type of faux fur, I should say. I, don't, I never use real fur, that's, that's a no-no. But um, any type of faux fur, this, this works really wonderful for. So that is how you make and attach a pom-pom, a, a faux fur pom-pom, say that five times in a row. Uh, thanks for watching my video, and please do subscribe to my channel. I do welcome all feedback and comments. Again, thank you for watching. Thank you.